When it comes to editing your raw photographs, there are two ways you can go. You can either opt for a combined asset management and raw processing app, such as Adobe Lightroom, or you can opt for a dedicated raw processor, such as Adobe Camera Raw or DxO's Pure Raw, and then manage your files separately. On One Photo Raw sits squarely in the combined asset management sector. As such, its direct competitors are Adobe Lightroom, Capture One, DxO Photo Lab, and Luminar Neo. All of these products give you asset management tools of varying complexity and depth, a raw photo editing engine, and miscellaneous extra features such as HDR, AI resizing, AI denoise, and AI sky replacement. Having tested Photo Raw in the past, I felt that it was a competent but uninspiring app that lacked the clout and finesse of apps like Photolab or Lightroom. And now On One have released a new version of their flagship editor with improvements and new features including better noise, masking and filtering tools. Have On One done enough to compete with the amazing new tools in Lightroom or the class leading Denoise and raw demosaic and photo lab? Well, yes and no. Okay, let's talk interface first, and it's mixed news on that front. On the one hand, I found the interface clean and fast, and I like the layout and the design of the control icons. On the other hand, I found that On One made some strange decisions regarding the placement of important controls, such as the mode switch. The browser has thumbnail, detail, film strip, compare, and map view modes, but they stuck the controls to the switch modes in tiny icons in the bottom left of the screen. The file browser is clean and simple to use and enables you to quickly access catalogued files, i.e. those that you've fully indexed in Photo Raw, and a browse mode that works like a regular file manager. I found indexing to be fast and the app was quick to switch modes, upscale thumbnails, and display full-size images. Pretty much everything can be tweaked to work the way you want, and I certainly didn't discover any obvious features missing from the file management parts of the app. You can, of course, rate, choose your picks and select your rejects, group in albums and search in the usual ways. There's also a smart organized tool that can allegedly find photos that share similar appearance or location. When I was in browse mode using the standard file manager, it took over two minutes on a folder containing 160 images, but in catalog mode with a fully indexed folder, it took about 30 seconds. Furthermore, those search results were inconclusive and vague at best. I tested it with my new top of the range Apple MacBook Pro M2 Max, so this isn't a horsepower issue. I also ran into multiple strange write error messages when I was clicking around inside the photos in my photo archive and the whole app crashed the desktop on me three times during testing. You can find special processing tools located on the main browse screen of Photo Raw in a similar way to Luminar Neo's front end interface. Pano, HDR, focus stack, time lapse, resize, print, share, and export modes can all be accessed from buttons on the right-hand side of the screen. The HDR mode is fast and fully featured, enabling you to tweak the overall look of the images or standard tools such as highlights and shadows. The pano mode was a lot less impressive. I found it to be slow and not particularly capable. I tested it on a 21-shot drone pano that Lightroom had no problems at all with, and it only managed to stitch 14 of the 21 shots together and took nearly two minutes to do it. The time-lapse tool is fairly rudimentary, but it did successfully render my 150 frame test sequence. That being said, on completion of the time-lapse render, there are no notifications, the video file just appears in the browser folder, and it's left to you to find it and view it in a video player. 
I think if you're going to include features like this, then finish the job on one. At least give us some notification that the process is complete. The last of these special features is the Resize AI tool. In my testing, the results were fairly underwhelming. Certainly nowhere near as good as something like Topaz Geiger Pixel. It did a relatively good job on pulling back detail in resized faces, but JPEG artifact removal and overall quality was average, similar to the results I get in something like Luminar Neo. The core of any raw editor is of course that demosaicing engine and the develop tools that you use to recover and enhance raw image data. In terms of demosaicing, I found it to be good, but not excellent on a par again with something like Luminar Neo in terms of the stops of dynamic range that were recovered from the raw file. The class leading demosaicing engine for me remains DxO's Pure Raw and Photo Lab. On one have opted for a fairly traditional layout when it comes to those core raw processing sliders, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, white and black points, Structure, color balance, vibrance, saturation, and dehaze are all present and correct. I've got excellent results with the raw processor, unlike something like Capture One, which always seems to do some processing before I lay a finger on a slider. On One's demosaicing is a blank slate, and all the better for it. The slider strength itself errs on the side of caution. And in most instances, you can slide all the way to the extreme left or right without overdoing it. This is a good thing because it allows you to edit much more naturally. Probably the strongest features of Photo Raw are its denoise and sharpening tools. These are located within the main develop tab and enable you to remove color and luminance noise, de-blur and sharpen soft photos. Like DxO Pure Raw, you get several options here in order to cater to the varying processing requirements of individual images. There's the classic denoise and sharpen, which uses the traditional methods that we've all used for the last couple of decades. In many cases, these tools are the best fit for the job, and since they're the least powerful, should always be tried first in order to reduce that over-processed look. Both No Noise AI and Tack Sharp AI are machine learning tools. No Noise is best deployed on images with high ISO noise, while Tack Sharp is better suited to soft images. If you have both high ISO and a soft or blurry image, then you can use both tools at once, but the results looked very heavily processed to my eye. No Noise AI was the better one of the two AI tools, but I had to do a lot of experimentation with the two new AI models, the High Detail and Original, and the Luminance Detail and Color Sliders. The central problem with both of these tools was brutal over-sharpening, which in many cases led to strong edge halos and when you zoomed in and pixel peeped, weird geometric patterns. Photo Raw does come with a presets engine, which gives you the kind of filter functionality you get in an app like Instagram. It even has an AI adaptive preset tool, which tweaks filter output depending on what's in your shot. These offer a one-click processing option, but I've always found filters and presets to be cheesy and largely pointless. If you're not going to use the actual raw develop tools in an app like this, then save yourself the money and just use the ones built in at Instagram. Most raw editors include every tool in their app within that raw editing interface, but On One decided to use a slightly different system. Their logic is sound. What's the point in having things like channel mixers cluttering up the interface if you never use it? So in Photo Raw, to utilize a tool like the channel mixer, you add it as an effect. Importantly, you can also apply these globally across the entire image or use the AI masking tools to select a specific portion of that image. This is a welcome feature, but it bears pointing out that it is nowhere near as powerful as the masking tools you get in the current version of Lightroom. The accompanying Super Select tool is similar to Photoshop's object selection, but in my experience, not as sophisticated. The entire workflow is built around layers, meaning that you 
build up your edits stage by stage to arrive at a finished composition. The beauty of having everything in layers is it's very simple to go back and fix any edits you aren't happy with, reducing or increasing any of the tools you've applied to it. The combination of tools in the local edits tab and the special tools in the effects tab is easily as complete as something like Adobe Photoshop. It's been interesting seeing the various software developers reaction to the AI revolution. Some companies such as Skylum got in early and some such as Affinity are choosing to completely ignore it. On one introduced the first of their AI processing tools, No Noise AI, a couple of years ago, and they've been slowly adding new features since then with the rollout of AI sharpening, sky swaps, and masking tools. In this latest release, they've tweaked their AI masking tools to enable you to refine masks using the refine brush. You can paint in or out portions of the mask and new to this 2023.5 edition, you can encircle an area you wish to select and the AI masking will attempt to detect that object and to isolate it with a mask. I found both the AI masking and the encircle tool to be a bit hit and miss. Quite often it would mask an area I didn't want to select and it would take multiple brush strokes to remove them. I got the best results with the masking tools by tweaking the feather density and levels tools within the mask edit window. All of the masking tools in Photo Raw could do with some improvement, but in On One's defense, they do at least have them, unlike Capture One and Affinity Photo. There's a lot to like about this latest version of On One Photo Raw 2023.5, and it remains a solid performer with a strong and extensive range of tools and features. It does seem a little bit buggy with the weird disk write errors and those crashes to the desktop. The interface and asset management side of the app is excellent with a clearly laid out and highly usable image browser with good multi-monitor support. I like the fact that I could change the main interface font size. It's great when you've got lid glasses like me. On one have now fully embraced AI processing tools, but they've done so with mixed results. There is, for instance, an AI keywords tool, but it didn't seem to do much beyond adding exit data to the keywords window. It couldn't identify a beach or a sunset, for instance. The main AI-powered tools vary in quality. The strongest of them are the sharpening and noise removal tools, No Noise AI and TechSharp AI. They were both highly effective, but a bit overzealous, and I had to greatly reduce the effects in order to keep my images looking natural. TechSharp in particular had a tendency to introduce geometric patterns in the image when used at higher strengths. The developer's decision to move most of the tools out of the interface and into a bolt-on effects architecture is a neat idea and it works well. You can adjust those tools required for each individual photograph and, due to that layer-based design, return to them and tweak them as often as you like. On One offer a variety of pricing options, including a generous subscription offer, which includes all the apps and plugins, along with a terabyte of cloud storage space. The single purchase option represents excellent value for money at 137 bucks here in Australia or 79 US dollars, particularly when you consider that you get a full suite of AI tools for that price and a speedy and pleasingly designed asset management suite. Personally speaking, I would still prefer a purchase DxO Photo Lab because even though it has weaker asset management tools and little in the way of AI masking, its raw editing capabilities are superior and its AI denoise and sharpening tools are the best you can buy. If features like database-driven asset management, one-click adaptive presets and AI masking are further up, your list of requirements than mine, then you could do a lot worse than to invest in Photo Raw 2023. And that will do us for this video. What's your preferred raw editor of choice? Are you heavily invested in AI processing or do you prefer to keep it old school? Let me know in the comments section down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe for more photography, video and drone related content 
from me. Until the next time, guys. Ta-ta.